All right, and we are off. <laughs> Welcome everyone to uh, our discussion today of advanced deliverables. Um, I know there may be a couple of users here that uh, are, are not too familiar with the deliverables just yet. Um, you know, maybe this is your first time really seeing uh, this part of the product. Uh, no worries. You know, I am going to start off with some of the basics first. Uh, but no, we are going to move very quickly into a lot of the advanced features. And so, one thing I like to always emphasize whenever I'm doing any kind of training, any kind of discussion uh, regarding deliverables, or really any part of WorkMajig, is just because WorkMajig has these features. It doesn't mean you have to use them to be successful and to be efficient. All that we at WorkMajig, what we strive for is we want to make sure that our product um, meets everyone's needs. So there's always going to be some features that you, you're not going to use, um, but there's features that you might use that others won't, and that's okay. So I will be showing you some you know, variety of ways of using deliverables and some advanced function. But let's go ahead and start off with the basics of deliverables first. So the basics of deliverables, which I'm sure probably hopefully many of you know that, uh, but you know again for some of our for some of our newbies here, uh, just to kind of make sure we have a ground base of well, where does deliverables really begin? You know, so a deliverable, uh, as you can see, I have a project open here, and I have my deliverables here on the right. I'll talk about that in a moment. Uh, but I have my deliverables here on the right, so it shows up kind of on the project dashboard. So for those that just want to go to a project. Uh, they want to find the deliverable and they want to start one uh, and, or look at the one that's on there. You know, this is a great way to kind of get an introduction into deliverables. Is It's easy to just go to the project. There's a deliverable section on the dashboard. Uh, click the plus sign and that starts a new deliverable. Now, just before warned, you're going to see extra fields here that you normally wouldn't see because I've enabled all kinds of features. Doesn't mean we have to use them all, <laughs> but I've already enabled them so they're already here. So, for example, if I was just doing a basic deliverable, none of these advanced features, I would just put in what's the deliverable name, and I'll just say some artwork. That's my deliverable. I'm going to send some artwork around, have some people make comments and, and whatnot. Um, again, there's going to be some fields here that are required because I've had other things enabled. But know that you just put in the name of the deliverable, description. Uh, you might put a due date and say, hey, I want this done by Friday. So you might just go ahead and save that and create a deliverable. Wait for it to open. So a basic deliverable is, is split up into two parts. We have our internal review and we have our client review. So these two steps uh, are done in succession. So you'd basically go, okay, the internal review, okay, who's gonna be an approver? Uh, we got this person as an approver, let me add more. So we got two people that are approvers uh, this person's going to get a notification when the round is complete. So what does that mean? Well, that means that, you know, if we send four rounds of review total, well, this person's going to get notified at the end of each of those rounds. But the approvers, they get notifications at the beginning of the round when you send it for review. Because they're the approvers. They're the ones that are going to be, uh, you know, commenting on it, making a decision, and those sorts of things. Once this internal step is approved internally, well, that means that file that we had attached that was part of that first round, or let's say the fourth round, uh, whatever file was in the fourth round was approved, well, then it automatically wants to flip to the client review or the client step, at which point it takes that file that was approved and wants to send it to your client for approval. So then now you go through client rounds at that point. So your clients are the approvers in this step. You yourself would be the notifier because you want to be notified when the, when the client had made a decision. So that's just that's the way deliverables were designed from like day one of, of this in WorkMajig many 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 years ago. Um, so that's the default workflow, you know. And you can still do that. There is nothing wrong with using it in this way because, you know, you might consider one project equals one deliverable, and so it makes sense to kind of just manage it in that fashion. Hopefully that all makes sense. Um, now let's talk about some more of the advanced features. Well, I'm going to go ahead and delete this deliverable because I'm not going to use that as my example today. <laughs> uh, so uh, let me just uh, close and reopen my project there. Just make sure we've got the, uh, looks like it's, it's still there. Um, it shouldn't be here anymore. Let me just get rid of it. Oh, okay, I see what it did. It got rid of the round. There we go. Okay, so it's gone. All right, so let's talk about more of the advanced features. So uh, for the advanced side of, of deliverables, well, where do we begin with that? 
Well, the first step is saying, okay, well, how are we going to, how, how do we want to maybe utilize these deliverables? Do we want them to be, um, you know, uh, part of our schedule? Do we want them to have uh, additional functionality uh, enabled? Well, to, to do some of what I'm going to show you today, I'm going to run you through a couple of options that you might want to enable uh, to explore more of these options. So one thing that we can do uh, right off the bat, and this is a preference. You know, like I was saying, we have deliverables here on the right. So this is, this is fine if you want the deliverables here on the right. Um, if you're going to have, you know, just a handful of deliverables, maybe one to five, it's great to just have it right here on the dashboard. But in some of the examples I might, might describe today, you might be having hundreds of deliverables on one project. In that case, the, the dashboard isn't going to be really beneficial because it stops counting at, you know, 10 deliverables or something like that. You know, there'll be a, a, a way to say, show me more, um, but then it opens up a new screen. So it kind of, instead of wasting time of having to scroll down the dashboard and get to that show more, um, what you can do is in the system settings, and by the way, you need to be like an administrator or have some higher level security rights to do this, but from the system settings of your project, uh, there is deliverables. See how it says show deliverables on the right? Well, I can uncheck that, save that. Now you do have to refresh your browser in order to see that change take effect. So I'll do a quick refresh here. And now notice in my dashboard, you know, deliverable is no longer listed here. It's on the left, it's under the project details. So when I click on deliverables on the left, this opens up what we call the deliverable board. Now, again, I just jumped into an advanced area of the system, but this way it takes you right to your deliverables in a manageable view when you have, you know, again, like lots of deliverables, uh, multiple that you're managing in one project. Again, if you're just doing one deliverable per project, and that's, that's your workflow, again, that, that's great. Uh, and you don't need to go this far into the system, and that's okay too. But when you have a lot of deliverables, you're doing a high level of management, different things, well, we can just have a link to open up the deliverable board for that project right from here. Plus, once you have that kind of workflow designated, and let's say you're a project manager, instead of using that deliverable board to keep flipping through different projects, you could have deliverables as a column here on your projects page. Even if you just do one deliverable per project, it still is great to do this because you could just click on that one, it opens up the deliverable board for that project and it just shows you that one deliverable. Okay, great. But if you have ones with multiple deliverables, again, you click it, well, you're gonna get the deliverable board for that project with its multiple deliverables shown right up front. So it's kind of neat. I like this one of the, 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 the better enhancements I've seen is being able to just have a um, a deliverable uh, shortcut, if you will, to each project right here on the projects page. Now to add this, because this isn't here by default as well, to add this from the projects page, go to more, and again, system settings. In your system settings, you have to scroll down to uh, edit the columns. So when you go to edit columns, you want to scroll through and check deliverables. Now, just by adding, it's going to add it to the end of the list. So you can choose display order and kind of drag it up. You know, right here, I kind of put it between the project task status and the open to do column. So that's how I've set up my page. So I can have a quick shortcut right to the deliverable board for each project. I think this is a faster way to access your, your end result, if you will. All right. Uh, so with that in place, uh, let's talk about um, enabling some other features first. Uh, that will play a role in what we're going to see. So what I have, I already have my uh, system setup screen open. So again, if you're an administrator, you can go from the main menu, uh, go to admin manager, go to system setup. Once you're in system setup, you can go to transaction preferences. This section of the system, by the way, controls like how the system just functions for you. <laughs> so um, be, be mindful of what you check in here because this can change how things work. But for what I'm showing you today, uh, there are a couple of options you're gonna wanna turn on. So under uh, transaction preferences, I went to projects. Uh, by the way, you might have to say uh, show advanced options uh, to see all of these additional options that I'm showing here. Now from projects, I'm gonna scroll down into a section, um, there we go. So uh, down here under schedule options, there's one called use to do's. Now to do's, Sometimes uh, I don't want to go down a rabbit hole, but, but to-dos can be used in a variety of ways. Um, I'm not going to talk about all the ways it can be used, but at the very least, we want that enabled 
So that way we can use to do's at the task level. Okay, so at least we have that enabled. The next step here in what I'm showing today under deliverables, when we go to the deliverable section, here is that default kind of workflow that we were showing just a moment ago. But if we need to divert from that, you know, we need, uh, you know, kind of a, sure, we need an internal step, we might need um, a legal review step, then we do a client step. So maybe you need three uh, parts to your process. Well, we've created a, another feature called deliverable types. And in order to utilize that to create your own workflow, let me scroll down on this page, you see there's now a use types with deliverables. This is, a, this is one's a lot of fun to use, uh, to set up, to customize. Uh, this is great to, you know, again, create multiple workflows for different types of deliverables. So for example, you know, you might need, uh, you know, a video to be going to multiple groups and multiple orders, um, different types, different roles that are reviewing it. Uh, and then other types of deliverables that just go to, okay, this one person. So deliverable types allows you to kind of have a lot more control and predetermined functionality. I'll talk about that in a little bit. But just letting you know first, you want to go here to enable it. Now, there are some other settings that we'll see here today, like uh, use status with deliverables, uh, use to do items with deliverables that you do want to enable for what I'm showing today. Um, status really is just taking it another step. You know, if you're, if you're trying to split up the management of your deliverables on that deliverable board that we were looking at. Um, but just know that those options are here uh, if you want to enable them first. Uh, there are other options that are going to play a role into what I'm showing today, such as uh, require tasks on deliverables. And also there's this new option for a blank current owner of the deliverable when a task is changed. I'll explain how all those are kind of going to flow into what we're doing today. So there's a lot of the advanced functions um, to really integrate your deliverables into your schedules. Okay, so that's kind of uh, the introduction <laughs> of the basics. And then, of course, here's all the advanced options I've enabled to show you what I'm going to show today. So let's go back to our projects page. So here on our projects page, I've created two projects. I'm going to bring the Gantt back a little bit. Just as an idea, I, you know, I purposely made this, this project overdue uh, just because I wanted to, wanted to separate the dates today uh, to really highlight these two kind of workflows I've created. So I've created this kind of more of like a agile type of workflow where, you know, it's just kind of a free for all <laughs> type of thing. Uh, and then I've created more of like a, a, a scheduled workflow. So you can see this next one has, has color segments here. Now that is a, a feature called timeline segments. You know, you can, you can research that uh, later on if you want to, you know, get some of this kind of functionality to appear on your Gantt views. Um, I highly recommend it by the way, uh, but uh, I've done this on purpose to really kind of show you the workflow of um, a scheduled workflow uh, where you're able to then resource per task. So let's talk about a little bit of the, um, you know, the differences here. So I'm going to open up this first one. You know, this is more of my like agile type, for example, and I'm going to open up the schedule here. So if we look at this schedule here, we can see that all of the tasks here they just run concurrent. You know, there is no end date, start date, you know, predecessors, nothing like that. It's just saying, okay, whenever we're in design, you know, uh, you know, here's either how much time we allocate for design, or you know, maybe there may not be an allocation because we're just we're just running a whole bunch of things through here uh, that we don't have the you know we don't have the manpower to monitor and resource manage at that finite detail. Because imagine this project has like a hundred deliverables on it. Okay, well, we don't need to, uh, we don't want to track the minutia. We're just gonna, we're just gonna put deliverables in different task statuses here. So that way, whenever a, ta a deliverable shows up on design, okay, whoever's assigned to that task will see it and they'll work on it and then they'll move it to the next task and so on and so forth. Um, so there's a lot of ways we can integrate um, deliverable workflow into the schedule, just depending on the scope of work you're doing, um, how you want to manage it. Uh, and whenever I hear resourcing come into this, okay, this, this, this example may not work the best for, for resourcing, you know, I will admit, but you can still manage things at a high level. Uh, you can still do larger budgets and say, okay, we know we have 100 deliverables coming through here, so we might allocate or budget, you know, 100 hours to this one task. Doesn't mean we're going to allocate 
you know, an hour per deliverable. We're just saying, okay, whenever it's in design, you know, we're going to do some work. We're going to put time to it. And so you're just managing it again at a high level. So that's one idea and concept. Hopefully that, that kind of makes sense a little bit. Um, if not, we'll come back to that and, and discuss it further. Now, more traditionally, I'm going to click on this second project I created. I'm going to look at its schedule. And so this one has more of like a scheduled timeline. You know, there's predecessors, starting due dates of each task, you know. So we're going to run through this system. Um, you could imagine that, okay, there's going to be maybe one or handful of things that we're going to be um, developing and reviewing uh, all the way through. So what I've done here in this case is we have a, a task for each round. So traditionally, again, we have three of those internal rounds. Uh, traditionally, we have three you know, client rounds. So I've created a task for each of them with the benefit of being able to allocate time to each round. Now, I, I didn't go through the detail of you know, lessening the hours per round because typically you spend more time on the first round uh, and less time on the, on the subsequent rounds. But again, that's, that's neither here nor there. <laughs> I just threw this together. Um, but you can imagine that, okay, well, I wanna, I wanna allocate more time on the first review because it does take more time to do that one. Well, great, that's where you're allowed to, you, you can do that kind of resourcing uh, at this level of detail. Now, a lot of times what, what's nice about this is that you're able to track, especially on the client rounds, you're able to track how much time did we have to, you know, do work on that first, you know, review. You know, so when we sent the deliverable to the client, they came back with 20 comments. Um, okay, we, we did a lot of work on that one. You know, so when we get to round two, okay, hopefully it's less, and then round three is less, you know. Now, what happens if there's a round four? for example. Well, what's nice about having it set up like this, and because, again, the, the only reason why we have it set like this is because we want to track how much time is per round. So if that's what you're needing, and you're needing to resource at this level, then this is kind of a, a good template to start with. But again, let's say, well, there's round four. What do we do? Well, what we can do is we can take this, uh, this round three task, click on the uh, three dots here, and we could say, okay, duplicate this task. So when I say duplicate a task here in the schedule, it's gonna create a task right below it of the one, the copy basically of the one above it. So I'm just gonna you know, delete the three and put a four. So now we have client review four in our schedule. We do a nice little save and refresh. And it's just a predecessor of our prior task there. And it just would show up as the next task to work on, for example. And because, um, now I don't wanna get into scheduling and predecessors and all that too much today, but just know that this last task, its predecessor is actually the client rounds summary task. So I can add multiple rounds for review uh, as needed. And that pushes out the final more and more as we keep working on it. So some kind of neat ways to be able to just add round ad hoc, if you will, as needed. Um, and it just fit into your schedule and push things out below it. Now, of course, if you add another task, well, well, in this case, that added different, more allocated hours. So before you start round four in this example, you might need to jump over to your estimates. And again, this is all ties together. This is the great thing of WorkMajig. Everything talks, communicates, uh, and pulls together. So in this case, okay, we came to a round four. Well, I need to create a new estimate. This is going to be a change order estimate, mind you. I'm just going to auto pull the changes that are in the schedule. I've already created a budget, by the way that budget matches my allocated hours verbatim. So I'm creating a change order of those extra hours we added in the schedule. So I just simply have those options checked. I hit save. And there we have, there's our labor, you know, a total of seven hours to do another round. So I could take this estimate, the change order estimate, and I could send this to the client and say, okay, well, this is how much it's gonna cost for a fourth round of review. So that way you can get that you know, added to your budget, you know, which would then, you know, affect if you're doing fixed fee billing, for example, you know, your client is aware that, you know, hey, this is going to cost more. So this is how I would suggest if you're, if you're managing it to this level of detail, then this would be a great way to do that and inform your client of, okay, well, we, we agreed originally the three rounds. So you want round four? Well, here's the round four budget. <laughs> so hopefully that gives you some ideas and some cool things that uh, can be done here. Um, I'm going to just close out of that, just giving you some food for thought of, you know, incorporating the schedule like this 
and into deliverables and your budgets and all that good stuff. Okay, let's get into uh, the, the reason we're here, deliverables. So knowing that our schedules can be set up in multiple ways uh, and we can integrate in them as needed. Let me back out of this schedule here. So here we are back at the uh, top level uh, of our projects page. So we have this kind of agile project. It's got five deliverables on it. Let me open up the deliverable board for that project specifically. So what we have is when we're in the deliverable board, we are then uh, taken by default to the task view. So when I'm in the task view, what I'm seeing here are the tasks in this schedule. You know, first task is concept, second task is copy, so on and so forth. So what I've already done here is I've added these pages, if you will, you know, like we're, you know, maybe this is a five page brochure. Um, we're going to manage each page independently, uh, move them through um, the process um, because sometimes some pages get approved uh, right away. Some pages have to go through many rounds of review. So if you, if you need that level of detail, then, then split it out per page. Sure. It'll be more work to, you know, save five separate files per se, uh, but then that way at least you get to kind of see um, how everything is kind of coming together and where each page is at. Where uh, if you were to do it as one deliverable with a five page PDF, for example, okay, well, that one file is that round, you know, so it, it you know, becomes a little bit, little bit more challenging to know which pages are approved yet and not approved when it's all one file. So just food, again, food for thought. Now, in this case, um, on this concept task, we've added five deliverables. Now, I did start these deliverables. So let me go and pretend to create a new deliverable here. So when I created these five deliverables, I did it using what we call types. So like I said, those deliverable types that you're able to establish, um, I've created several types. There's one for pages that we have here. Uh, if we had a video, if we had a brochure, Again, you, you can make this list be whatever you need it to be. But know that each of these types have it has its own approval process. So whenever I do a page, that is set up to be sent to specific people for review. So it takes kind of the guesswork out of it, which almost allows you know your 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 standard users, even your creatives, to create these deliverables as needed. But yeah, you know, there's just different ways to approach it. <laughs> so we'll get to that global type setup in a moment. So in this case, I said, let's create a page. Um, if we know we're gonna do five pages, I did, you can in the name here, when you hit return, it's gonna create a new deliverable for each name you put here. So if you know you have five pages, okay, well do page one, page two, so on and so forth. You know, do the deliverable type, hit save. That'll create five deliverables instantly. Now. There's still more that needs to be done on each of them, but at least that just creates kind of like your workflow, what you need. So some neat ways to really start off with creating multiple deliverables at once. And again, I just already had them created, but on your, your workflow, it may be different. You may have the creative create the, the deliverables. Uh, your project manager may create it as part of the process of starting the project. You know, the, the, the ways to use this is kind of endless. I hate to say, because a, a lot of our clients want to hear what's the best practice. Well best practice is kind of like what I'm showing you right now is depending on your workflow, either be more agile uh, or be more uh, resourceful with how you manage your schedules. So I'm kind of giving you two, two examples here today. Okay. So with these five deliverables on this project on the first task, well, how did that translate to my creatives? So I'm actually going to open up the today creatives panel at this point, just to kind of give you a quick glimpse of this. So how it translates to your creatives is they can now see, oh, hey, on that concept task, I have five open deliverables. So that's pretty cool. You can, it, you know, just by having those deliverables assigned to that task alone, that tells your creatives, hey, we have five deliverables on this task. Um, I'm also assigned to the next task of copy, but there's no deliverables there. Okay, well, I'm not working on that one then. <laughs> I'm working on the one with the deliverables on it. If I scroll down, here's my other project. So again, this is why I set up, separated those dates today to, to kind of show you the, the, the separation here. So in this, in this other example, where it's more like a resource project, we can see, okay, there's one open deliverable on the first task of concept. Then you got your copy, 
scroll down, you got the round, you know, I don't need to see all this because that's further along in the process. So here's a really cool way that you can now, again, you know, integrate with your users and deliverables uh, in this way. So you can go to your, uh, in the Today Creatives, you got that system settings again, where you could set the default. Um, just to make it simple so I don't change every setting all, every time, I'm gonna go to my user display options. And we've added some toggles here. We can say only show me tasks where there's a deliverable on it. So I'm gonna say open deliverables only. And when I save that, Look at my, my, my Today Creative. It, it trimmed it down just to the tasks I should be working on based on those tasks having deliverables on them. So this is a pretty, again, this is, I think, a pretty cool way to work here because now if we're deliverable focused, well, we should only be working on the tasks that the deliver, deliverable is related to. So I can see the concept task, five deliverables. Okay, here's that concept task on the other project. There's one deliverable. So we're only working on tasks that have open deliverables on them. Kind of a neat way, again, kind of a neat way to show your creatives, hey, just focus on these tasks. Because I, I hear that so much where the creatives get bombarded with tasks on this page because they're showing too much. Um, and again, you know, this is all dependent on how you choose to use Work in the Jig for yourself and your users. Um, this is just kind of a neat way if you really want to get advanced and integrate with the Today Creatives. Uh, really cool way to do this. Okay. Uh, knowing that the deliverables will uh, dictate what projects can show here. What does that mean to the creatives? Well, that means, all right, well, I'm doing concept. Uh, there's five deliverables on here. So as a creative, know that I may look at it differently than how the project manager was looking at it. So if I click on this task, for example, we've added a deliverables tab here. So you can just, without having to click into more things, uh, we have a deliverables tab where you can see, oh, here's those five deliverables that are on this project. They're assigned to me because I'm assigned to this task. Uh, and again, because I started them here and all that kind of stuff. So sometimes you might see it where it says not assigned. And there'd be like uh, a button that says assign it to me. But in this case, okay, well I'm assigned to this, this first task. These are the deliverables here. Um, they haven't been sent for a review yet. Um, so what we're trying to do is before we send them for a review, well, I need to open up each of these deliverables, for example, and here we can see uh, we have our details, we have uh, conversations, we have to-dos, and we have time. Um, where did my, hold on, am I missing something? Yeah, I don't know why my review rounds went away. <laughs> Sorry about that. I was like, wait a minute, something's missing here. Uh, let me go back in there. There we go, and there's our review round. So what this means is, okay, we're in concept. Well. So what we need to do is, is we need to take our first file, our first review of this page one, and we need to create a round for review. So because this deliverable was created from a, a deliverable type, this is what's really cool about deliverable type. When I go and create my first round here, because file equals round, that's the way I like to equate this. So when I have my file ready for a review, I'm gonna first click and make round one. I'm gonna add my file. So we'll use an existing file, for example. Uh, I've got this version one file, Let's add that on there. Now what's cool is the approver list and notify list is already populated with people. And there's only one step here. So this is just how we do our pages. You know, all of our pages, you know, we don't do, maybe we don't do a client review at this point. You know, so we just have one step and we have approvers and notifiers built in and that was based on the deliverable type. So this way your creatives can just click round one, add the file, send for review. And they don't have to think about all these extra steps because it's already been set up in the round. So that's what your creative could potentially do is they would go into each deliverable uh, and just you know send the round for each of those deliverables out. So we can see that one's in round one. Uh, these ones still have not been sent out. So kind of a neat way that your creatives can kind of be in some of the uh, process and workflow and control um, in, this, in this way. Now, there's different ways to approach it from here. So you might say, okay, well, I've done round one, so go ahead and throw this to the next task. So if you're doing things sequentially in the task, uh, in your schedule, uh, this one's in round one, so I've done my part, I've uploaded the concept art, 
So it needs to move on to the next step. So you just click the arrow, that deliverable will then get moved to the next task in the schedule. So if I refresh my list, because I'm assigned <laughs> the next task in the schedule, okay, now we got to focus on some copy. But you can imagine, okay, somebody else does copy. So that task would appear for them to work on, and they would see that they have one deliverable they need to review, open it up, see what's being said about it, uh, and then that's where they take control. So some neat ways that the creators can be involved in this workflow, pushing it through the schedule. And that's where some of those options that I've enabled in our transaction preferences comes into play. Okay, uh, let's go back to my deliverable dashboard here, for example. Uh, let me do a refresh because uh, things got moved. So me as the project manager, I might, I might again, I might go through my, um, my projects page. I might just start here and say, okay, uh, let's look at the deliverables for this project. How are they doing? Oh, okay, that got moved to copy. So round one is sent for review. Here's who's reviewing it. So we give you a lot of high level upfront detail uh, of what's going on. Now, but you could imagine, okay, well, this round is, is sent for review. Let me open it up. Uh, let me see what the latest comments are. So instead of having to click through each round and click comments, know that you can always click comments at the top here and it'll always show you the comments uh, or the review screen of the, of the last round. So it's like a neat little shortcut to get to the most recent comments. And you can then open up the, that round and see uh, the file itself along with any comments people have made. Now, no one's made any comments yet at this time. So there's nothing to see here. Um, now this deliverable was sent to somebody else for a review, so I can't complete the, <laughs> I can't complete the, the, the review process here, so I, I should have changed that before I sent it. Uh, but uh, if I was the one reviewing it, there would be a button up here called uh, make a decision. And when you click on that, you get, the, you get three options. I approve, I approve of changes, or please resubmit. So knowing that you have additional options here as well, some of our advanced functionality that you can control uh, under the more button, again, there's system settings. <laughs> You'll see that everywhere. Uh, so in the system settings of the review screen, for example, you could say, um, well, we don't do that approve with changes. We, we, don't, we just want approve or reject. We don't, want, uh, we don't want a middle option. So you can actually turn that off. Uh, plus, you have the option of saying use advanced tools. I would highly recommend this, especially if you do um, lots of uh, specific detailed artwork, for example. Um, so we'll put a use advanced tools on, we'll take off the um, approve with changes option, we'll turn that one off. Uh, and let's go ahead and save this. Now I'll go ahead and, uh, uh, doesn't matter. There's no display options technically here. So we'll save our changes. So the big change that you're gonna notice is when a uh, let me, sorry, let me get back into the view comments. I think it removed my comment feature for a second there. There we go. So when your users get into starting making comments, so if they start to making a new comment, ah, here's all my advanced tools. So I enabled all of these advanced tools here to show more than just the arrow and the box tool. So now I have a lot more uh, tools to show here, uh, but these are all just related to, you know, uh, this is just a JPEG image. So the only comments that can be really made here are, you know, if I make the glass bigger, uh, I'll use a kind of a drawing tool right around that. Uh, we'll save that comment. Uh, I'm gonna make another comment and I'll just say move right. So again, this is, this is what the reviewers are gonna be doing. So this is kind of separate from your creatives and project managers right now. So your reviewers would be coming in here, seeing these comments and um, doing their markup. So note that you can, you know, you can put in multiple wording in the comments here. You can do multiple markups in one comment. I personally prefer to make one comment per one markup. That way it's easier to manage, um, especially once you start getting into a lot of comments. So now that I have two comments in here, I can click on the comment of make the glass bigger and it shows its markup versus move right and it shows its markup. So just by enabling advanced tools, you get more options uh, for the users to use. Now, the reason why I wanted to get some comments in here is to show this check, this, this option that has appeared called fix this. So 
So again, that's go back to the beginning of today's webinar if you need to see this, but that's where we were in our transaction preferences. At the project level, we want to say use to do's. On deliverables, we say use to do's with deliverables. That will enable this fix this option. So imagine that this round was uh, completed. <laughs> I know I, I should have assigned it to myself. Uh, maybe I'll do that for the next round. Um, but we could say, okay, of these comments that have been uh, made, um, maybe now I'm the project manager. I came back in to see what comments have been said. So I'm going to cherry pick the list here and say, okay, well, I want my designers to fix this. Make the glass bigger. Let's fix that one. So when you say fix this for the first time, it's going to ask you, okay, well, where should these quote unquote to do's go to? Well, for round one, we might want that to go to our, well, we're on the wrong project. Because uh, if, again, if you were resourcing, you might say, I want all of round one's comments to be in round one in that, you know, internal review one task. But this is more of that agile project. So I just want the comments, go, the to-do items going to the task we're on at the time. Um, these are people that are already assigned to that task. I don't need to add more. So I'm just going to save it as that is the follow-up task, just that current task. So next time I go into the next option, okay, move right, and I say fix this. It's not going to prompt me again. So you only get to pick one follow-up task per round. So keep that in mind. Okay, so I've just created uh, a, a to-do fix this item for both of these comments. Now again, how does that translate back to your creatives? Well, let's go back to my creative panel. Just do a quick little refresh here. Look at this one. This one on the copy task that that one deliverable is on. There's now two open to-dos. So how this can also work is maybe you, you, you know, do you want your creatives being part of the, the deliverable workflow or do you want them to be alerted when there's some to-do items to fix? Because you might only have your creatives on specific tasks when there's something to work on. So when I go in my Today Creative under system settings, there's an additional option here of, uh, oh, let me go back to my display settings, make it simple for today. There's another option here to say only show tasks with open to do items. So if I were to check that instead of open deliverables, I'm only seeing this one task because there's two to do items. So again, this is another way that you might work it and say, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to remove the, the creatives from the deliverable workflow per se. Instead, I'm going to have them just fix to do's that I assign to their task. So that way you can have the follow-up task be different than the task that the deliverable is on. So again, different levels of ways of managing it. I know it gets kind of, I apologize, I know it gets kind of confusing um, to, to wrap your head around it, but that's where you really want to kind of investigate your workflow and process and see what works best for you. Now, having said that again, you know, we have open to-dos. So you have a to-do list here at the task level. So your creatives could say, okay, well, of the deliverables I'm working on, um, here's the comments that people have made and, and, and sent back. Uh, our project manager, you know, they're, they're, they're the ones that get notified when the round is complete. They go through the deliverable round. They, go, they cherry pick the list of the comments of what to fix. These get handed off to your designers here. They can see that to-do list, make the glass bigger. Okay, let me go in there, open up this to-do. Um, are there any, any additional comments other than make the glass bigger? No, that's it. Okay, well, it should be pretty obvious. Um, now let me view the markup. So this is what's really cool when you come when you link it and combine it this way. Um, I'm going to click on view markup. This opens up the deliverable right to the markup and that comment being open and highlighted. So right away I can say, oh, make the glass bigger. Uh, oh, that's what they're talking about. Cool. Okay, I can do that. Um, so maybe I went in and I've adjusted the file. Uh, okay, what is Marcus to do is completed. So I've done my part on that one. Uh, there's one more thing to fix, move it right. Okay, well, I'll try to do that. And, you know, maybe I'll, I forgot about it or who knows, I, just, I don't know. Um, so I just kind of moved on and, and did something else. But you could imagine that, okay, well, that was uh, the comments that were made of round one. So again, what you might do is say, okay, well, we have our deliverable on this one task. Um, that round one uh, was completed. Uh, again, I wasn't able to uh, um, complete it properly because I wasn't uh, um, uh, assigned as the, the approver. 
I'm just going to go ahead and cancel this round just to move it along. <clears throat> so when you cancel a round, it, it stays there. So the comments that were made, everything, it, it stays there, which is nice. So now when you go back to make another round, it just kind of starts over. Um, I'm going to say same as the last round. And again, I have the new version. I have a new file. So I go and say, okay, create our new file. Uh, I already have a version two uploaded, or I could upload it at this time. So there's my version two file on the deliverable now. Uh, I am, however, going to change <laughs> this one to me, just so I can show you the approval process. Okay. But again, the, if, we're, if we have everything set up right, I shouldn't have to do what I just did. It's just a matter of making myself an approver, um, but I added the file and I hit send for review. So again, the people in the notify list, they get notified when the round is done. So I send for review, my version two, based on the comments of round one. Okay, cool. So I'll move this deliverable to the next task maybe. I don't know what your process is per se, but let's throw it to the next task. Oh, that's because we have, <coughs> we have some options hidden. See, that's where we're saying open to-dos only. I'm gonna switch it back to open deliverables only. And now we see it on the design task. And that task appears for whoever is working on it at the design level. So always neat ways you can kind of integrate this and, and have things appear for your users uh, along the way. Okay, um, so now that it's on here, um, you know, again, it got sent for review. Let me open it up. So if we see the comments of that last round. So see, I have a make a decision button because now I'm the approver of this round. Now, again, I'm on the uh, approval side, uh, not the um, administration side, if you will. So here I am, I have the option to make a decision. There's the I approve and please resubmit. because I turned off the uh, approve with changes. Now, just to give a quick update. So approve with changes, what that really uh, is, is, is referring to is a, is a workflow thing, meaning, okay, well, somebody else is gonna approve this after me. So I wanna maybe, CYA and just say, I approve, but you know, I got comments. Uh, so that's why you might put that in there uh, just to say, well, I don't want to hold it up um, if nobody else has any objections, but here's one thing I might've said. Okay. So that's just kind of that process. Uh, but that is what would complete the round is, is whoever is in part of that workflow. Uh, any of those comments again, um, now that this is another round, um, Anytime I make a comment and notice that, okay, the glass is bigger, but it, it didn't get moved to the right. So I'll, I'll say it again, please move right. <laughs> and I'll throw an arrow in there with this one again, just to kind of clarify, hey, move it over here. Um, so when I save that, the reason why I want to show you this is because this is a, a new round. Again, when you click fix this for the first time on a new round, that's when you get the follow up task dialog. So this is just telling you, okay, well, where do you want the, these fix it comments to go? Because whoever's assigned to that task will then see those appear in their today creative. Because you might have a different workflow for your creatives than the workflow of where the deliverables are at. Okay. Um, may have gotten a little off stray there. I apologize. But I wanted to show you kind of the review screen itself and that commenting tool and how it kind of relates back to your creatives. Uh, and all of those good things. Um, okay, uh, let's talk about deliverable types uh, a little bit here. I don't think I got into much detail on that one just yet. So let me go back to our, our transaction preferences. Because whenever I say the word workflow, um, that's really the approval process. So because I've enabled uh, deliverable types from um, the transaction preferences, as we did in the beginning, under global lists is where you're gonna find deliverable types. So when I open up this list, you know, here's that list that we saw earlier. There's page, video, and brochure. So I've enabled these uh, three deliverable types, and we can determine the approval process for each of these types at this level. So that way, again, this takes it out of the hands of the user who's creating the deliverable at that time to determine who to send it to. So this way, it's predetermined. So you can say, okay, well, these, uh, these pages we do, let's edit the approval process. Okay, we just have one step. In that step, 
you know, we have it set to send to everyone at once. Everyone must review. They got two days to approve it. Uh, here's the approver list. Here's the notify list. But let me get into the edit settings here. So let's talk about these settings that are listed here. So send to everyone at once. What that means is if you have multiple approvers, well, I want everyone on that list to get an email at the same time. Where if I were to choose send to people in order, then it would send the deliverable to the first person in the list. And once they make a decision, review or approve per se, then it would go to the next person. But that's where this additional step comes into play of everyone must review. So if we have it set to send to everyone at once and everyone must review, that means these three approvers, you know, if they approve it and this fourth person never touches it, well, the round will never complete. Now, there, there's a way to skip that last person um, if, if you need to get into the deliverable and do that. But depending on our workflow, you know, do you want everyone to have a chance to make a decision before it's done, before the round is done? Uh, or is it just going to be, you know, the first person to mark it done wins? So a couple of ways you can work that. Now, when it's sent to people in order, you know, because I have everyone must review not checked, that means this first person, if they, uh, if they reject it, okay, the next three people will never see that first round. So you have to wait till the first person approves it before the next person can see it and so on and so on. So by checking everyone must review with send to people in order, then even if the first person rejects it, it'll go to the next person for review. Even though the round's already rejected, it doesn't matter. It'll still go to the next person so they have a chance to see it and comment on it. So those are kind of the two major workflows. Me, I'm a big fan of just send it to everyone at once and everyone must review. That's my preference. Um, because I just want everything being looked at as soon as possible. Now, if you notice here, um, I don't actually have a person called copywriting, and I don't have a, an employee called graphic design. So what we've added into the deliverables in these, uh, in these, the way to set up provers is when I click on the plus sign here to add an approver, we have our employees. Let's go to our staff. So sure, here's our employees. Here's our people that we can add uh, as specific reviewers. But I have also have the ability of saying, okay, based on uh, key people, what that means is, well, whoever the account manager of the project is, add them. So that you can see that we've got an account manager. So that automatically adds the account manager as an approver in this case. There's also one for project manager, if you have a project manager enabled, it's a separate setting, by the way. But if you have project manager enabled, okay, also send it to the project manager. Well, what about these first two, copywriting and design? Well, that's where we can say, okay, based on the team of the project, if somebody has uh, copywriting or graphic design checked in the team of the project, we'll add them too as an approver. So there's kind of neat ways that you could add people uh, to a deliverable dynamically, just simply based on, you know, are they some? Are they the account manager on the header of the project? Uh, do they have a specific default service that they've been added to the team? Just keep in mind, though, if you don't have somebody that matches this, it just ignores it and doesn't um, doesn't add them. But as long as you you know kind of make sure all your uh, functions are are defined, then everybody gets added pretty easily. So there's some neat ways to add different people. Now again, this is a very basic, you know, kind of like one step process. So send it to these people for review, notify these people. Um, I, I did see a question about videos. Uh, yes, we, we do work with videos, by the way. Um, you could upload whatever the latest MPEG-4 codec is, uh, it should work. Um, we also do have integrations into um, YouTube and Vimeo. Um, so when you add a deliverable, choose video, it'll give you some options there. But in the video process, if I edit the approval process, well, I've never defined this one. <laughs> uh, did I define this one? No, I didn't, I didn't define any of these. So again, this is where I, I was referring to earlier today, where again, that default process of a deliverable is internal and client. Well, here's where you can say, okay, well, we need it to go to our um, sales team first. They need to you know, have a first take a look at it, make sure that it matches what they're expecting. Uh, then we'll add an, a legal review, make sure that everything is, is, is okay to, 
to publish publicly. Um, then it may go for management review. You know, so you could do that as a, your approval process here. Um, now, th this is saying, like how I was showing before, about the uh, send to people in order. <coughs> Sorry about that. Uh, so you ever send to people in order? So if we're sending it to the people in order here, you know, what you might be thinking is, well, I want to go to the copywriter, the designer, and I want them to make comments. I want them to, you know, finish it out before we move on to management. So instead of having it be sent to people in order this way, you might split this into two steps. And so copywriter and designer, maybe that's the creative review. We'll create, we'll, we'll call that the first step. And then we'll take the account manager and project manager, we'll put them into the management review. So that's where you can kind of split up your steps. So you could have different workflows for each step without having to combine them in one ultimate process. Now, again, there is no right or wrong way. It's just what works best for you. So definitely some experimentation, trial and error uh, is definitely used here. Um, I would definitely also suggest, you know, getting in touch with your um, account manager and say, hey, you know, we saw this uh, deliverable today about webinars, uh, a, a webinar about deliverables. <laughs> I apologize. Uh, and, and you might say, hey, you know, I'd like to, you know, learn more, show you my process. You know, how can we take our process and kind of, you know, how can work Magic handle that? Um, so this is one of the areas of the system where we can kind of try to meld that together. Where a lot of times I'm sure you all know is that when you start using work jig it's best to use the work jig way. Um, and that's still true uh, for the most part here, except deliverable sometimes says, well, I need to you know, manage it in this way. I need to see it in this way. I need to go to these people in this order. So that's just a, a matter, you know, sometimes it just, again, it's a discussion with your account manager of, okay, well, let me show you the ins and outs here uh, to get kind of what you are describing. Okay, uh, I saw some questions there about the deliverable board. So let me go back for a moment here and talk about the deliverable board a little bit more. So in the deliverable board itself, uh, there are um, multiple ways that it can be viewed. I just, today, I just really focus more on the task level of detail because with the task level, you're able to see, well, where are things at based on um, either how the creatives are moving them around or what I need to manage. So when you're really integrating with your creatives, I would honestly say you're, you're looking at things that are more of a task level. But if you're kind of, you know, saying, well, I'm using the deliverable board more for a project management view, not necessarily for the creatives. Um, and all I'm doing on the creative side is giving them to do's. Well, that's perfect. Then, you know, use the to do's to send that to your deliverable, I'm sorry, to your creative tasks. That's perfect, you know? And so in that case, me as a project manager, again, especially if you got like hundreds of deliverables, okay, well, this isn't the best view because I don't wanna have to keep dragging and dropping hundreds of deliverables around because um, this board will just become huge. You know, these columns will show, you know, 50 deliverables in each column. Okay, I don't need that. So that's where you can flip it and say, you know, let me look at it from a grid view perspective. And so I can see, okay, here is where every page is at. You know, here's your list of, you know, example, 100 deliverables. Um, you know, I can group it by, you know, what task they're on or what status we use um, and have all kinds of things to update um, manually here. So this way I could just manage all of my pages and say, okay, um, yeah, page one, I can see uh, it's currently with uh, this employee because it's on that task maybe, uh, or I'm gonna change that. Um, I can change what task it's on. I can see what round uh, is the current round. And you can always click on that round one to open up the latest review um, and see what is being said and done. So you have some like direct access through here as well. Um, plus you can customize the columns here. Uh, you can add custom fields. You can do a lot of things here. But honestly, trying to show that in, in a webinar here just kind of uh, is overwhelming. So I'm trying, trying to show too much info other than just knowing that you can organize your deliverables uh, in this fashion. Now, everything I've been doing today, by the way, has been per project. So uh, in this case, you know, we have this one project has five deliverables. But you can imagine you have a, like a large scope. You have uh, a campaign. You know, we're rebranding this whole client. Uh, it's going to take a year kind of a thing. So we can actually say, instead of just focusing on one project, we could say, you know what, show me all of the um, deliverables for projects of this campaign. So you would be able to see 
you know, you, you may have like 100 projects for this campaign, and maybe each project has one deliverable. Okay, well then view it by campaign instead of project, and you'll still be able to see all 100 of them here and manage them here. So you have a lot of neat ways you can utilize this. Again, it, it's all scalable on the scope of work you're using or doing um, of what we need here. Okay, I tried to, I probably tried to cram too much into today's webinar, so I do apologize if I uh, kind of went, went a little around the place here, but let's go ahead and open it up to some questions now, because I've seen a lot come through. Um, I'm gonna scroll back up here. Uh, let's see, uh, a while ago, <laughs> Karen asked, uh, I thought the deliverables were in the schedule as separate tasks, uh, but on today creatives, we're showing multiple deliverables on a separate task. Yeah, I mean, it, again, we, we could, you know, make it one deliverable per project, so it moves through the tasks. Um, but you can have multiple deliverables on a project, uh, so there's multiples going through the schedule. So well, again, a lot of ways we can use it. Um, all I can say is, if you have questions on this, definitely you know contact your uh, account manager. You know, just simply go to uh, send an email to support at Um You'll get the, you should get a response back pretty quick, and maybe uh, just have some questions or set up a time to 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 meet with them to really dive in further here. Uh, let's see. Yeah, Chris, you had asked, does this work with movies? Yep, I already kind of explained that you can use a, uh, you know, MPEG fours with the latest codec, um, or use Vimeo or YouTube. Let's see. Uh, Jill asked, unchecking show deliverables on right did not result in moving the deliverables to the left side. Um, yeah, I know. It, yeah, you have to kind of like refresh the browser. Sometimes log in, log back out. Um, if you're still not seeing it, you know, it should resolve itself over time. Um, but there are a couple of ways we can do a hard reset of the UI if needed. Uh, let's see. Kay <laughs> asked, what happens if two people have the same service uh, or two key, key people on a task when you use deliverable types, services, key roles, and are used to determine who to approve and notify? Great question. So if you have two people with that same service, um, so let's go back there real quick, deliverable type. So if I have two people with copywriting, both people get added to the approval process. So hopefully that's what you were, you were wanting because <laughs> that is what happens. Um, so it, correct, it'll, it'll just say anyone with this service, not just one, but anyone on the team with the copywriting gets added as an approver. Uh, that is correct. Uh, let's see, my last question I see here. Um, is there a way to import deliverables? Uh, yes, but um, I would say, you know, because there, there, there's so many facets, so many nuances, if you will, of deliverables. Um, I would say deliverable type would be your best supplement to wanting to import, okay? Having said that, let me also go back to where if I'm creating a new deliverable, I showed this in the beginning, where if I'm creating a new deliverable, you know, so like you said, you want to import, you know, deliverables. Okay, I need to, let's say I need to import 100, 100 deliverables. I just like using that example. I don't know why. Um, so you might have uh, a spreadsheet of those 100 deliverables that you're wanting to import. So what I would suggest is just copy and paste that first column of your spreadsheet and just paste it right here. So maybe, you know, one, two, three, you know, so you're, so if you copy and paste here, you could imagine, oh, it just added 100 lines, one line per deliverable I want to add. And these are all, you know, the, um, you know, brochure types. So I'm going to add 100 brochures real quick, just by simply pasting in the name of each deliverable. Um, from a spreadsheet, for example, and then just use this as the type. So that way that determines the workflow. My import file doesn't have to have all that information set up because it's already been predetermined here. And that would be, I would say, the best way to import is just simply by copying and pasting just the name of the deliverable and leveraging types. So hopefully that's a good answer for you there, David. Um, I'm going to peek up here. I see some Q&A questions have come in. Um, so those ones are a little bit harder to, to, to get to. I apologize. Let me see here. Uh, let's see. It looks like Katie said, what would, uh, would this best be utilized if there were planned deliverables within the schedule or real time as they become ready for review? Uh, Katie, great question. I mean, that, that, that's where deliverables are so versatile. You know, and, and unfortunately, I, I apologize if I jump around a lot and give a lot of examples because there's so many ways it could be used, you know. That's where I, I, you know, I know when I'm dealing with clients, I, I like to get kind of do one-on-one -on -one and say, well, 
let's really investigate what your process is. You know, work magic is all about process. So let's find out what that is first. Then let's translate that into, okay, here's how we can utilize it to, to achieve that. So uh, Anonymous said, uh, can you highlight the main differences between uh, when you would want to use a deliverable versus a to-do? Great. Okay, great question. So we're going to talk about deliverables versus to-dos. I know a lot of times, you know, there's a lot of questions there. So like I said, like I was mentioning earlier, to-dos are very versatile. They can be used in lots of ways. I've just shown you the way today that, that to-dos can be used with deliverables, with turning comments into an action item, a, a, you know, an open to-do. But again, to-dos can be utilized in much different ways. You might have web developers, for example. That seems to be a, a good example. So you might have a, uh, a task that you assign web developers to and you add, you know, maybe like quote unquote a ticket or a to do uh, to that task for your web developers to work on. Okay, well that's separate from deliverables, you know. Um, so you can have a, a task in your schedule that's for the web developers and another task of, okay, well this is where we put the deliverables and the deliverable to do's for more of our creative side. Um, so it's just about knowing how to separate those processes um, in that respect. But yeah, there's a lot of versatility with to do's in that respect, I will say. Uh, last question I'm seeing here today is from Tyler. Uh, I would like to see the deliverables on the left. And I did what you said. Okay, so I think um, you might have been the one mentioning that earlier. So again, yeah, if you're not seeing the deliverables change in that uh, project dashboard, um, you know, try refreshing your browser, try logging in and out. Uh, if it's still not working, you know, just shoot us an email, support at workamajig.com. And we, uh, what we can kind of help take you, give you a couple steps to do like a hard reset of the UI. All right. Well, that is that. Um, are there any last minute questions here today? I think I already see people kind of dropping off here. So um, I will just say I appreciate for your time for today. Um, if you all have any further questions, uh, you know, feel free to just shoot an email to support at welcomeajig.com. Uh, we'll be glad to help you out. But I hope this was informative. Uh, again, I'm really just here really kind of give you ideas uh, and, and concepts that can help you to leverage the system to, you know, work for you better. Uh, yes, uh, Jeffrey, so how do we get a re video recording of this? Uh, this will be posted into our uh, webinar section uh, shortly hereafter. So as an example, if you go to our support guide, support.workamajig.com, uh, right on the front page, we have videos and webinars. Click on that, uh, that button and there will give you a list of our videos and top one is webinars. And you can go to past webinars and this will give you a list of all of our past webinars here. So you can, you can do kind of like a, a search on the page, find it and look for anything with the word deliverable in it and uh, you should find it pretty quickly. But eventually also will be added and we'll be at the top of the list um, for the week. <laughs> so, all right. Um, let's see, Jill real quick threw a question in here. If you edited your security group, uh, you need to edit it and each edited security group. Oh, okay. You're, so you're talking to um, to Jeffrey there. Yeah, uh, not Jeffrey, but uh, other other users. Correct. Yeah. Real quick on that topic. You know, um, when you are in, say, a project. Sorry about this last question here. So if you have, you know, because when you're editing the system settings of any page, you know, the company default is at the top. So if you see like creative production you might see like a little checkbox here. Well, that's because you overrode the security rights here. Um, and that means I need to make sure that the company default and creative production both have that same option checked the same way. So that might be uh, what you were seeing or, um, or needing, but okay. Awesome, <laughs> awesome, awesome. Well, thank you very much for your time today, everyone. Uh, you all have a great day, uh, take care.